Now it's time to uh, pass the floor to the group of experts uh, who will present you intellectual output two. They are three in total. Uh, and um, as you can see from the agenda, we uh, intend to um, communicate to the public today that we are a team uh, and every uh, intellectual output uh, is the result of a, a strong uh, multicultural and uh, multidisciplinary uh, cooperation. Uh, I pass the floor uh, to Despina Iatridu from uh, VETSI. Uh, Despina is uh, currently the general secretary of the VETSI and the senior policy officer of uh, the Federation of Veterinarians in Europe. And uh, she is also currently member of the European Committee on Veterinary Training. Thank you, um, Despina. Uh, please start sharing. You uh, and uh, you, Massenzio and Chiara uh, will present uh, um, how to assess the quality in laboratory animal science education and training services according to the Hermes proposal. Thank you, Silvia, uh, for this nice introduction. And uh, I would like also to uh, really reiterate that uh, this project has been uh, the result of a uh, really teamwork. So I'm starting this presentation and uh, I would like to introduce to all the participants very briefly uh, VETC. VETC stands for Veterinary Continuous Education in Europe and it was established uh, by Veterinary Academia together with Veterinary Specialists and the Veterinary Profession. It is a joint initiative with the aim to uh, develop a system for accreditation of training intended for continuous professional development of veterinarians. Due to our expertise in quality assurance in training, we largely, largely contributed to the overall uh, Hermes project along with all the partners. And uh, we particularly led the work related to intellectual outcome too. I will pass the floor to my colleague Massenzio Fornassier, uh, with whom we coordinated together this uh, work in Hermes, and he has been our technical expert to present now the outcomes of uh, the work of intellectual outcome tool, uh, meaning the evaluation manual. So please, Masengio, the floor is yours now. Thank you. Thank you, Despina. Thank you all colleagues attending this meeting. Today, I will share with you uh, the results of uh, our work uh, trying to put in together some uh, a document we called uh, quality manual uh, in uh, trying to put together some uh, models uh, examples and uh, concept uh, for quality evaluation of training education in laboratory animal science try to Cannot scroll the presentation. Sorry about that. I think you have in the lower left corner. Oh, Next yes, that one. Yeah, sorry about that. So, uh, so no, the question. At the beginning was why a quality manual? Uh, we we need to, in some way, decline the objectives uh, of the education and training programs that are already defining as learning outcomes in the current regulation and guidelines in, in EU. So the purpose of de developing a quality manual was to achieve. Uh, the goal of any organization that wants to deliver effectively and consistently their objectives. So at the end, they need a quality, a quality management system. 
uh, the basis of each quality management system is a set of rules uh, that is generally called quality manual. What is the purpose at the end? Uh, the purpose is to identify strength and weakness and uh, uh, measure achievements and uh, sustain continuous improvement. So uh, when you develop a manual, you need to have in mind who, who is the, who can be the target. Uh, as a first instance, uh, we, uh, we know that the, the training providers can be uh, can have benefit um, in developing or using a manual in which uh, and these uh, rules are defined, but also a quality manual can be used by other stakeholders to assess or to uh, understand the level of uh, the training programs and compare them between different providers. So the quality manual is not intended as an accrediting tool, but instead a tool for assessing and comparing quality level uh, of the expected outcomes in the different uh, uh, programs and within the same programs a long time. Okay, so uh, the, idea, um, the idea was to starting from uh, the principle described in EU Directive 63 2010 and the, the guidelines uh, issued by the uh, European Commission and uh, to include them uh, in, a, in a frame in which we identify the key processes and possible uh, qualitative and quantitative indicators because without indicators you cannot measure anything. Uh, so we, the process as uh, Silvia said, uh, started from a background analysis, uh, look, having a look to what is existing in this field, then preparation of the manual and validation from external uh, experts. The, as we all know, the regulatory expectations are well defined in Directive 63. This is just a, a screenshot of the Annex 5 and was developed uh, in uh, different documents, including this one that was a reference to establish uh, the uh, learning outcomes, the European um, uh, Education and Training, uh, Training Framework document and data in 2014. So um, the purpose of this document was to set uh, uh, what is the expected uh, competence of, uh, of uh, personnel working in laboratory animal science and the quality manual uh, take this concept uh, and uh, uh, try to identify roles and responsibility and how to measure to achieve these these outcomes. So these are only a few of the uh, documents that we took as a model or for uh, having a, what we call the background analysis. Uh, the ANC uh, uh, manual on quality assurance uh, uh, and also the uh, other standards uh, in um, higher education in Europe. The principle uh, in education and training can be summarized in, in this uh, couple of slides. Must be, this is the uh, ANC, uh, the SG. Uh, quality assurance guidelines. Uh, uh, this statement, uh, uh, we, we took this statement uh, to uh, develop the manual. Uh, we, uh, there is a need to have a, a policy for quality standard, having a, a design and approval of the programs, uh, 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 student-centered learning, teaching and assessment, so focus on students' needs, uh, having a system to uh, um, develop a uh, um, process for student admission, progression, recognition, and certification. And, uh, sorry, also taking into consideration uh, development of teaching staff, uh, resources, uh, information management, and public information. So these are the uh, basic principles on which we uh, developed uh, the manual. and. Uh, uh, 
in, in the, the view of applying, as Silvia said, the concept that uh, the quality, other quality system already developed, uh, the continuous improvement of uh, the uh, training program. Uh, we took as a model the EQFM model and also the ISO standards. This is just a, a, a string <laughs> slide in which I tried to put together all the uh, process and sub process we identified. For each of them, we try to describe in details what, uh, what is the meaning inside and how, what kind of indicators can be used for each of these uh, bullet points. As you said, as you can see here, we divided in two steps. The, the first part on the left is related to what need to be prepared in advance and the part on the right is what kind of parameters you have to analyze after the implementation so you have what you what you have to do before and what you get after and putting together this you may have a very clear picture of your organization and how it works just a couple of snapshots for a single indicators so we call it the product and services in a general way but means any kind of uh, training uh, initiative training program course you you know that uh, the, the training can be a single course uh, one hour uh, from as a webinar let's say from a very very complex program and, um, developed along the year so we call it uh, in a general way but at the same time, we uh, try to define how to decline the concept uh, and the standard we put here in the, in the left column in, in a practical way. This is the example of the same, same standard, the same indicator. So uh, this was, our, in, in our knowledge, uh, the best way to decline this concept that is already described also in other in other documents and this is the basis this indicator were used as the basis for develop this assessment tool that Silvia or Chiara will explain soon after how to use it this manual uh, would I mean the intent is to help to map the process to uh, to help providers to identify in a clear way, different way, their process, as I said, identify potential gaps, what is lacking in the organization, in the program, and analyze the risk in order to reduce the risk of failures in the training program. Uh, the indicators also allows uh, you to understand if you are doing the right job over the time. And as I said, uh, the the system need to be used uh, taking into consideration the complexity of the training program. Uh, we believe that the implementation of a quality system to all applicable process to a, a minimum level should be the basis for mutual recognition of training program. Now, this is my conclusion. So uh, just to summarize that uh, the quality manual is based on uh, legal requirement uh, guidelines already uh, available on uh, publicly and uh, we collect them as a quality standards in the intellectual output one that Sylvia already described. Uh, we just uh, uh, tried to decline principle in practice in order to help uh, who wants to use them to uh, have a clear picture of uh, uh, the organization, the program, and also to uh, explain the organization, the program uh, to the external stakeholders. Uh, as I said, uh, the quality manual can be used as assessment for the assessment uh, of, the, uh, of the program for the program training providers, and also can be used by, by others, uh, stakeholders to evaluate, compare, and uh, have a clear understanding of the training program. And this is, was my last uh, presentation, so uh, I will give the floor again to Chiara, I suppose. 
this is Silvia for a few minutes so in order to thank you, my sense you for um, your clear description of intellectual output too. That is uh, strictly related. We can consider it the bridge between uh, intellectual output one and three uh, that uh, Chiara Albanello is going to present to our uh, uh, public today. Uh, I'm very happy to introduce uh, my colleague, Chiara Albanello, as uh, I said, she's uh, working um, at uh, the Training and Project Management Unit at uh, Istituto Zoprofilattico Sperimentale, and uh, uh, she has a senior profile as trainer and uh, a strong engagement and robust experience uh, in the implementation of European projects. Please. Chiara, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you, Silvia, and thank you for my sense. Uh, my short presentation, presentation is aimed at um, presenting uh, the last step of this uh, uh, path composed by the three intellectual outputs concerning the quality uh, standards manual and then finally the self-assessment tool that we are uh, build it uh, in uh, Hermes project. This uh, self-assessment tool is the quality standard in practice. Uh, since it takes in consideration the Hermes quality manual already presented, the, uh, and the quality standard uh, is the basis uh, where the concept has, have to be aligned, the principles and the criteria described in here. So the three uh, pieces are strictly connected and um, harmonized. The objectives of the self-assessment are uh, many and various. First of all, to perform an initial self-assessment of the quality level of their training programs and services, but also understand their strengths and identify potential weaknesses in the training delivery training delivery. Uh, it's important also to uh, identify which indicators are relevant to their training services and can be used to integrate initiatives and to identify duplication and potential gaps. Uh, and finally, also to measure uh, achievements and sustain excellence in uh, our uh, training delivery. It is, of course, targeted to education and training LAS providers. How to manage the self-assessment process? First of all, the process starts with the study of the Hermes Quality Standard and the Hermes Quality Manual. Uh, it's important to say that it's not a very short uh, uh, process, but it's very accurate. So to fill in all field, the provider should perform a meticulous activity to collect all the information, data, and evidences that be, will be used to fill in the, the self-assessment tool. To support the orientist process, for this reason, uh, the system is um, uh, structured with the, the possibility to start with a quick version of the tool. Uh, that is uh, a preliminary step, but not compulsory one, and is helpful to uh, uh, orient the process. So after the registration, is it, it is the possibility to um, fill in to complete the quick version. So this is the registration mask. And uh, uh, where, when the system gives the possibility to start with a new self-assessment, uh, the provider can choose if uh, uh, start with a quick version of the directly with the full version. The, the expected output of this part is the, uh, is the um, elaboration of a draft customized graphs that orient the provider about the, um, its position, its position uh, uh, in relation to the various indicators and, and areas of uh, strength and weaknesses. Uh, for each indicator, the provider is asked to uh, self-assess uh, its degree of compliance in a scoring system from one 
unsatisfactory to five excellent. The grade three is the minimum grade to be considered compliant uh, with the standard. Uh, this is an example of the indicators that uh, are asked to be completed by the provider with the scoring system uh, that is in this quick version uh, simply to be um, arrayed uh, with, a, with a score. The graph in, uh, as outcomes um, uh, evidence the position of the provider in the various um, areas enables and results as presented by Massenzio before and the benchmark uh, Hermes benchmark uh, to compare uh, their performances and also a global uh, report about uh, the indicators which are uh, weak or strong and also a clear overview uh, uh, due, along the different uh, areas. After this part, is it possible then to go to the full version uh, or automatically resuming the recorded data into the full version or directly uh, into the full version? The final outcome will be uh, the full report. Uh, the scoring system is the same, uh, grade one and two uh, have to be um, integrated with the possible remedial actions. So the, the form now is changed and uh, the provider is asked to fill in also evidence of compliances at areas for improvement for each indicator. The final outcome is uh, this self-assessment report. Uh, where the identification of potential areas for improvement is specified. It has to be, can be used internally to improve uh, education and training programs and services, but also is a potential useful tool for external auditors, accreditation bodies and national competent authorities. Uh, in the next stage, this um, uh, tool will be available directly on our website and our invite for all of you providers is to uh, test it and uh, we will uh, make this uh, tool available for you. So please contact us for more information and for test uh, yourself this, uh, this tool. Thank you very much. So welcome back to the second session of this event. I have the pleasure to introduce you Max Joquist from the Swedish University of Agricultural Science in Sweden. He is um, still, I can say, before the end of the, the, the project, the coordinator of the Intellectual Output 4. He was uh, the first director of the Swedish Center for Animal Welfare at the Swedish University of Agricultural Science. He has a formal education in e-learning pedagogies and techniques and long practical experiences uh, using uh, such uh, uh, techniques uh, in the veterinary field. Um, I think that uh, you, uh, Mats, can provide us uh, with uh, uh, the introductive presentation of the hard job we did uh, to produce intellectual output for. So please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think that is. So, uh, the, uh, I, I will make a short present uh, introduction to the, to the e-learning experience that we had here uh, and I will focus it on, on uh, the use of the quality manual when developing a uh, lab animal science course and uh, at uh, SCAV and at the Swedish uh, Agricultural University we, we uh, uh, it is me, it's Vivika Hillegard and Katarina Svek that has been working on this. Uh, so this is a pilot project uh, 
e-learning uh, an e-learning module on the recognition of pain, suffering, and distress in animals used for scientific purposes. We have uh, focused on on um, mice and rats. And uh, I will try, you recognize this picture, I will try to, to describe how we have used the, the uh, quality manual uh, in developing uh, this course. So, so the first thing I want to say is that the quality manual uh, is very generic in its, uh, in, in the way it's presented. Uh, it can be applied more or less to any course uh, to obtain, maintain, and maybe most important, develop uh, quality of a course. And uh, as previously pointed out, it can be used by, by, by uh, regulatory authorities, etc. But uh, uh, Perhaps the most important is that it can be used by individual course providers to identify gaps and to find opportunities for improvement of, of their courses. Uh, the, uh, as as Masancio said also, the focus is not on the actual learning outcomes. Uh, you can go to, to, to the, the endorsed document for, for finding the uh, learning outcomes, but it's rather on the processes and the roles and the responsibilities uh, for, for the people involved in the course. And uh, in, in order to, to get a picture of the quality of your course, uh, you need to have indicators uh, as described also by Masencio. So these can be qualitative or they can be quantitative. But the important thing is that, that you have actual indicators so that you can compare uh, from course to course uh, or for from year to year how your course has uh, changed and the goal is to achieve a continuous improvement of your, your course. Uh, so in our uh, pilot uh, for setting up a new course we uh, looked at or identified a number of enablers. I, those of you who have tried to fill in the, the uh, quality manual, you know that there are an enormous amount of questions uh, stated there. Uh, and I think for the, when you're doing this for the first time, you can't really work on all those different items that are identified there. I would rather suggest that, that you make a, a selection of the enablers and I can say that we have done so. So we have uh, among the enablers, I mean, we looked at more than this, but some examples are then how the staff uh, was selected, uh, the learner and stakeholders needs, uh, the learning environment, the syllabus, uh, the self evaluation for the students, the final exam uh, and certifications. Those were enables, enablers that we uh, looked at. And uh, then uh, you also have to identify key results that you want to achieve. And examples of that are, are uh, result uh, analysis and program review. I mean, that's uh, an important uh, component I I in the, the um, determination of the quality that will determine the quality of your course. Uh, you want to, to, to uh, achieve a, a, an engagement from the teaching staff, uh, staff relationship and communication are important issues. Uh, uh, how 
learners are recruited and then uh, to look at, at uh, progression, uh, the retention and, and, and uh, completion. And, and I must say oh, uh, completion is a very important issue for, for e-learning. We know that uh, if you look at e-learning in general, uh, it tends to recruit a lot of potential learners, uh, but it's much more difficult to, uh, to, to, to uh, get people uh, to, to actually complete the, the uh, learning opportunity compared to regular te uh, teaching. So that's something you have to be aware of. And, and uh, you also ha have to identify your partners in this. Uh, and, and so then we have some in, uh, issues that we couldn't address in our pilot. Uh, and uh, so there, there are uh, crucial issues related to taking care of feedback uh, of uh, uh, of your course uh, to uh, improve for the next time, and and uh, so so uh, in the short time that we have had, we have only had uh, a few opportunities to run the course, and so we haven't really had time to go through all this these processes that will continuously uh, improve uh, a course. But uh, they are easy to see uh, in the, uh, how, how this can be, be guided by the uh, uh, quality. Thank you very much, Matsu, for this introduction. It's important uh, for, um, for you to know that um, before starting the course design, we have organized uh, train the trainers, uh, so we can say train the authors uh, sessions. We work together in Spain, courteously hosted by our colleagues in Murcia. Uh, we hardly work together to define the course uh, index, uh, the so-called skeleton, in order to address uh, the learning objectives, to share uh, the, um, the components of the different learning units, and also to provide the, the experts. This is an important aspect to underline according to our manual, to provide the experts uh, with a, a background on the uh, more effective e-learning uh, methodologies uh, to engage students. Now uh, it's time to enter more in detail into the presentation of uh, Intellectual Output 4. Michele uh, Podaliri Vulpiani from uh, our institute uh, will give you some um, information, uh, general information about the course. And then uh, Chiara uh, will provide you with uh, concrete examples uh, from uh, um, the, the course that, as you can see, was uh, really and deeply appreciated by the participants that I'm happy uh, to see participating in this final event. Michele Podaliri is a head of the Animal Welfare Department here at the Institute. And I pass you the floor for your presentation, Michele. Thank you, Silvia. Good morning, everyone. I'm happy and very proud to participate in this final, final event. Making this course was not easy, but I am convinced that a good job has made. Sorry. Trying to build a course, uh, uh, a course that could meet the needs of people who have a different culture, who use a lot of languages, have diverse ethics. At first, it seemed almost impossible. 
which could scare and fill up our wealth us. In my opinion, in, uh, the concept uh, of uh, Europe, uh, a single nation passes above uh, all true, creating a single culture while respecting individual uh, tradition. In my opinion, the teamwork was uh, the relevant element in uh, creating this course. The challenge we faced was uh, to create a course uh, accessible to all people who work uh, or, or could work in laboratory animal medicine, built uh, on solid scientific basis, trying to express complex uh, concepts most simply and concisely possible. The course, as some of you, you may know, has been structured on five units and one introductory unit. Each unit contains topics, which uh, in turn are divided into themes. The development of the course, we have chosen the right uh, scientific concept through careful letter to research the scientific papers and the paragraph of book on the topic to be mentioned as chosen. These uh, elements have been dosed and uh, combined through the work of the authors. Various components are harmonized through the work of the coordinator of the different groups who harmonized, harmonized the contribution of the various authors. The components are combined through editing work, creation, creation and realization of the graphic format of the course, external evaluation of reviewers, release of the course on the platform. Additional material such uh, as video, photo, various links are useful. Thanks all uh, the EZS gr working group. A special thanks to my colleague, Dr. Dr. Emanuela Rossi. Uh, many thanks for uh, all people. Efaristo, muchas gracias. Tak, gracias a tutti. I pass the, the, the floor to uh, uh, Silvia. Thank you. Thank you, Michele. It's not easy to show in uh, five minutes uh, a hard job of uh, several months. Now Chiara is uh, going uh, to provide you with uh, some screenshots and the description of uh, one uh, or more units in order to provide you some elements to evaluate it. Please, Chiara. Just few screenshots but, uh, to go in that in a such a uh, huge work is very difficult uh, in a short time. Uh, we will just show you some uh, screenshots about the course uh, to give you an idea and also, sorry, I have to share. Okay, just to give you an idea of uh, the work we, we did. Uh, first of all, this is the uh, main course page uh, we created. Uh, this is a res based on a responsive layout to any kind of devices, from a personal computer to a mobile phone. Uh, even if, of course, um, um, visualization uh, in uh, at least a, ta a tablet is uh, preferable. For each unit, um, there is a cover page uh, where uh, the details are presented, such as uh, training uh, and learning objectives and expected outcomes, and a general menu that uh, is uh, shown on the left part of the page, uh, where the resuming of the learning uh, path is always uh, accessible for each participant in order to, uh, to restart 
start uh, and to um, continue from each point uh, in at any moment, uh, like in this case. Uh, you you can see in uh, in the left uh, bar uh, the navigation uh, within the units uh, and uh, mm, a recording of uh, the already uh, studied uh, um, teams is showed clearly. Uh, we enriched the content with many video resources, uh, uh, images, uh, in-depth content, uh, like, like in this case. And also with some uh, um, dialogues uh, um, performed by avatars that presented uh, um, the uh, general introduction of each uh, uh, unit uh, and also uh, in, in the middle of them. Uh, often there are there are some external link uh, with the uh, in-depth content easily accessible from uh, any part of the of the course like in this case a direct link to the dg environment uh, web page containing all the official resources uh, related to to the this uh, theme uh, and uh, we also um, created a lot of uh, interactive images to facilitate the learning process. Like in this uh, example, um, there is a didactic image with dynamic pop-ups that show in a clear way uh, the exact definition for each part of the, of the physiology. Uh, uh, we have also image galleries, like in this case concerning uh, the Grimm scale. And uh, the in-depth contents uh, in uh, a specific uh, reference section has been inserted in each uh, uh, topic and also with uh, all the external link were available to facilitate the, uh, the access also in this case uh, uh, to a repository of uh, in-depth contents uh, uh, related to the specific uh, topic treated. Uh, we used also flip cards to engage participants in active learning, uh, showing images on, on the uh, other side, on the B side uh, specific definition. And uh, in uh, each unit, some self-assessment test uh, uh, within uh, within the units and al also of course a final test at, at the end of the course. Uh, there is another image uh, like, like an example very articulate uh, with uh, many processes uh, illustrated and many um, uh, didascalies to, to, to present uh, the various definitions. Okay, this is uh, my presentation about uh, very brief, but I hope to uh, give you an idea about uh, the, the final product uh, we, we created. And since uh, I have uh, the, the floor now, uh, I will present you also the final certificate that is uh, uh, produced for, for this course, but also uh, as a general intellectual output five. The last intellectual output, the number five, uh, is uh, uh, focused on the transparency in the last training uh, and uh, concerned the pilot experience of the digital certificate generator. Uh, it has been applied uh, for the first time now at the end of this uh, e-learning course. Uh, it has been programmed to standardize the competence certificate issued by LAS and training providers in regard to the function described by Article 23 of the Directive. And it is another tool uh, available for all the LAS education and training providers interested to use it. Now I, I'm going to show the um, pro functioning and uh, the, um, with an example uh, specific for uh, this e-learning course. Uh, the pillars of this um, standard certificate is to communicate and standard, 
dies in a transparent way uh, speci uh, specific uh, relevant information about the course, uh, like target beneficiaries, overall learning scope of the course, the training methodologies, uh, the specific uh, number of hours in terms of theory, hands on training and learning, uh, and the examination uh, score uh, finally acquired by the participants. But this is uh, a part that can be common with other, other topics. In this specific case, uh, we would like also to declare in a transparent way the learning outcomes acquired at, at the end of the learning path according to European Working Group document on the development of a common education and training framework to fulfill the requirements under the directive uh, on the team. Uh, also, in this case, uh, it is uh, a web-based tool uh, uh, that is created in the same environment offered to provider for the self-assessment tool. So, the registration uh, starts at the same access point. As I said, the first uh, information inserted in it are First of all, the um, data of, of the provider, the name and the legal representative who signed the certificates, of course. And then specific information about the course, the title, the course code, the number of edition, the start and end date. Uh, and as I said, the training methodologies used, uh, the target audience and the overall learning scope. Then um, the second part goes in depth in the specific um, characteristics of a last course. So the functions uh, according to directive treated, A, B, C, and D. Of course, the total score uh, possibly acquired in the course and the modules uh, treated. For each module that can be selected on a, on a menu, uh, the system automatically uh, will fill the specific uh, learning outcomes uh, foreseen for that module. And the provider has to specify, of course, the number of hours in uh, theory and in hands-on practical session devoted to each, uh, each module. Uh, the last part concerns the participant list that can be inserted manually one by one or in a massive way uh, through a csv file at the end of the process uh, for each participant uh, we can visualize uh, the certificate we can send it automatically by an email uh, uh, sent by the system and or download all the certificates an automatic email from the system will arrive to the participant uh, containing uh, the general information and uh, with the attached the, the course completion certificate that will be like this. Uh, this is, of course, an example. Uh, the name and the main characteristics in the um, first page and also a univoke number of certificate. And in the second uh, page, uh, information related to the target audience, the overall learning scope, the functions treated, the final examination score, and the uh, specifications about the modules treated in terms of uh, title, theory hours, and on hours, and specific learning outcomes acquired. And thank you. This is uh, <laughs> my presentation. I give the floor to the other speakers uh, about the intellectual output for. Thank you. Thank you, Chiara, for uh, this presentation. Um, I rearranged rapidly the schedule and the sequence for this slot because Chiara was engaged into, um, into slots. 
Uh, I'd like to, um, since we are talking about uh, transparency and uh, uh, also effectiveness of e-learning in uh, laboratory animal science, thanks to the following speakers, uh, you will receive other contributions concerning the achievement of such goals. Uh, it's now the time uh, for uh, Eva Evangelia Susidu to give uh, her contribution to the agenda of today. Uh, she is a senior research scientist at Demeter uh, since she has been working there since uh, 2000. And uh, uh, she is uh, really deeply engaged uh, in uh, coordinating and uh, uh, delivery uh, either training courses, but also research project uh, funded by the EU Commission. So uh, please, uh, have uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Silvia. I'm trying to find my uh, presentation. Uh, to share with you. Meanwhile, I can say that we are very glad to see that um, 81 participants are uh, following uh, our uh, uh, our event today, and we are very very happy for for uh, this uh, strong engagement. Thank you. Okay, I think that you have the presentation here. So. Thank you very much, Sylvia, uh, for the kind words and uh, also good morning to everybody. Nice to see you. Uh, we plan this day differently, uh, as you know, but let's say that we will try to keep safe and hopefully we will meet in physical presence very soon. Uh, I also fully agree with you, Sylvia, that it is not a final event. It is like a kickoff meeting for the next steps to be done. Huh? Uh, within our consortium. So, I will shortly present to you the communication strategies that we applied to enroll trainees uh, in e-learning course in our Intellectual Output 4. So, we have a lot of uh, methodologies and techniques to use, like personal contacts with potential e-learning course trainees, uh, both at national and at European level, personal contacts with members of the ethical committees of the institutes, universities, hospitals, medical centers, but also contacts with members of the national ethical committees for the protection of animals used for scientific purposes. Uh, we have other tools like organizational websites and magazines like our institutional magazine of ELGO, of Ελληνικός Γεωργικός Οργανισμός, uh, publicity, such as posters and banners, newsletters, videos and photos, and also publications, brochures, flyers, etc. So we had a lot of uh, methods for uh, communicate uh, our uh, intellectual output for and all other efforts uh, within Hermes projects and outputs. Uh, but we have also uh, two main events uh, like communications, strategies to apply, a, a multiplier event and a webinar. Two events that uh, in most of the partner countries have been undertaking to enroll uh, attend, um, trainees uh, to the course. Uh, so I will uh, give you some uh, information about what we have done in Greece. Uh, we had the multiplier event. We start with uh, potential trainees. Uh, by sending an invitation for our multiplier, multiplier event that was undertaken in the 24th of uh, September that uh, this year. It was a short, uh, uh, short uh, event, not uh, very long, so we uh, tried to keep uh, interest uh, through this event. And uh, after the invitation, we got the expression of interest by uh, more than 30 persons and uh, of course with, together with the invitation we had the agenda of the event uh, in, um, that uh, included 
the presentation of the Hermes aims and objectives and outputs, intellectual outputs. Uh, we had also the legal framework presented by Katerina Marino uh, from the Ministry of Agricultural Development and Food. And we had a presentation of what we have done uh, for the quality assurance of the course. And uh, this has been done uh, by Constantinos Rekas. And uh, I think that we had a, a very good feedback from this event. You can see how we made a skin uh, to organize this uh, virtual event uh, at our institution. You can see, uh, except myself, uh, Konstantinos Rekas and Sotirios Patios, uh, my colleagues uh, in Hermes project. And after that, we sent a certification of attendance to every attendant of the event. Uh, and we had also a webinar uh, that uh, has been uh, undertaken on uh, 15 of October. We managed to put this event uh, in uh, within the Erasmus Days uh, events, and uh, this is, uh, I think, this is an added value for the project uh, dissemination activities and the communication activities. And uh, in this uh, webinar, it was shorter than the previous event. Uh, we gave, uh, of course, again aims and objectives and uh, intellectual outputs uh, presentations, but we focused on the e-learning uh, course, the intellectual output for, and we tried to um, uh, to activate people to to give the motive to uh, trainees uh, to follow the course, to attend the course. Uh, so this is uh, the map uh, of the Erasmus Days uh, events. We, as I told you, we are very happy that we managed to put uh, Hermes project uh, within these uh, events and another uh, another uh, organization of the webinar. Uh, this has been done together with Konstantinos uh, Rekas uh, and uh, again we made the skin uh, to organize uh, this event. Uh, I would like to uh, finish this short presentation by thanking the wonderful Teramo training team. It's, uh, it's a privilege for me to work with you, uh, Silvia, Chiara, Annalisa, everybody there, Michelle, uh, from the past. Uh, I really appreciate this collaboration very much, deeply. I thank all partners and colleagues for uh, helping me. And uh, also a special thanks to my uh, Greek team, uh, which is uh, Sotirios Pachos, Dr. Sotirios Pachos, uh, our external scientific uh, partner, uh, but also Dr. Konstantinos Rekas, who has been uh, really valuable as a princess uh, from the very beginning of the project and throughout the implementation of the project, and also the uh, support by the uh, Greek Ministry of Agricultural Development and Food, represented by Dr. Katerina Maridu, head of uh, Animal Protection uh, Department in the Ministry. Thank you very much to everybody. And uh, stay safe. See you soon. Thank you very much, Eva, for having presented uh, the Greek experience in disseminating uh, information to recruit participants, but also in promoting uh, such a, a project. Uh, it's important for the audience to know that uh, in each country we uh, made, uh, we applied the same approach to recruit uh, a wide, a large number of uh, uh, beneficiaries. Um, now it's time to conclude the slot dedicated to uh, effectiveness and transparency, um, giving the floor to Gaspar Ross, a Dean of the Veterinary Faculty of the uh, University of Murcia. I would like to say that uh, we are uh, deeply honored of your uh, participation today um, because uh, you always uh, supported us with your vision during our steering committee meeting. Um, so it's important that we all 
learn from you some uh, uh, tips for uh, transparency application. Um, many thanks for your work, Silvia, and for the invitation to participate in this final event. Because it's, as has been mentioned before, we can consider this as a final event. It's as a final of the next event to begin a new, a new loop, maybe in a new project. And uh, my role in this uh, event is to talk about in this final, in this group of, of uh, short ideas or tips about the importance of transparency of competencies in certification to facilitate the student and researcher recognition of skills and mobility. First of all, I would like to, uh, to mention that I'm talking on behalf of the, my colleagues at the University of Murcia, Nuria Garcia, Maripaz Alguer, and Guillermo Ramis, who appointed me to maybe because I'm more into the management as a team of the faculty to talk about these key uh, elements. Because as you can see in this uh, first slide, I have highlighted the three keywords that I believe could be helpful to, to be uh, the line of my presentation. Talk about transparency, certification, and mobility, even though we know that we are not in the best moment to talk about mobility because within this pandemic situation, we have having this uh, meeting online when the last one was in Uppsala and was uh, uh, not virtual, but in the present. And now the, the situation is quite strange, but still we have to think ahead and, and, and to know that we are, we are planning this work for the future for the mobility and recognition uh, along the European Union. We know that we are talking about laboratory animal science and the European Commission, European Union, and we have Hermes as a project to try to link both. And Hermes priorities is always center target on the protection of animals used for scientific purposes. Which are, of course, is reflect on the on the legislation on the European Directive 63 2010, precisely in the Article 23, and because it's a very critical um, element or material to work with uh, experimental animals, it's also critical to talk about transparency because it is essential to know what. At been down is doing with the animal experimental animals and to recognize the skills and qualification all over Europe for the uh, market for the labor market for all professionals involved in the use and care of animals for scientific purposes. This is something very important. It's like a target. which is the main target? of the Hermes project, they have been mentioned before, we have to create a common certificate and with different steps, three main steps, designing, testing, and validate this common certificate, which is of one of the main outcomes of this project. And this is basically for the promotion of the free competent personnel in the European Union member states, and also based on innovation, multilingual digital certificate for the recognition and validation of the learning outcomes. So this is quite complex, but I am sure that within the MEMS project, all we have the feeling and, and also based on the on the perception of the different attendees to the this training is that we have reached this challenge is to get this common certificate with all this line and a new model. This new model is basically based on different steps. We have to define an European quality standard for vocational education 
and training on laboratory animal science for education and training to assess of both organization and the training offered for laboratory animal science in relation with the member states standard, which is quite complex, different members, and we have to harmonize within the vocational education training program in Europe. And finally, the, the last outcome is the free movement of everybody, of all the different uh, students. Why transparency? Because transparency is one of the main obstacles for mobility due to the diversity of qualification and the lack of transparency. That's why there has been increased demand of transparency about outcomes and impact in higher education. And this is like a golden eggs basket. It is within the Bologna process for the higher education in, in Europe, where we have all the quality, European qualification framework, the European credit transfer system and accumulation system, the European standard guidelines and quality assurance. All of these elements have been mentioned before, and also the diploma, the supplement a diploma, where the university we are working right now to try to identify this add value to the table, to the different degrees. And it will give us transparency, quality, and recognition. And this is also very important because it's not only very empty words. We are talking about transparency on any of the different steps for the students, for the plans, for the resources, for the activities, for the evidences, which is a key element on the quality system. The evidences that we have to obtain for this qualification. For the students and also for the system. And always with a common system of clearly warned, prominently post update and receptivity to the feedback. This is something also essential on a quality track is to get the feedback from the students to try to implement, as has been mentioned before, all along this presentation. Finally, my words are to try to summarize which are the benefits of transparency on the education is to improve the quality on the high quality education provision to inform the students and the employers to stimulate competitiveness as well in between institutions, but always keeping an eye on the quality check on the new institution because we have to keep a balance and the same system for private and as well for public institution to assign institutional status as a response to the increased diversity within the higher education, to support the transfer of authority between the states and institution, to assist to the mobility of the student, and finally, to make international comparison due to the increasing mobility of the students and the staff in a common market. So we have to align all the different tools for mobility are transparency within the European uh, system and the Bologna process. And just finally, my thanks and recognition to all the members of this consortium and especially to Tenamo team for this magnificent and great opportunity of sharing these common ideas. Thank you also to all the attendees to this meeting. Thank you very much um, for your presentation, your uh, um, main remarks, uh, because they should be uh, some way, in some way the basis for further um, improvements and collaborations uh, in the future. Um, in order to conclude um, the presentation of the project itself, 
and uh, the results. I'd like to briefly present you some facts and figures. We are um, talking about e-learning, uh, the strategies to engage participants uh, and uh, also uh, the impact that e-learning can have in uh, a sort of a synchronous approach worldwide. And uh, this graphic uh, may be difficult to read in a screen, provides you very relevant information about uh, the number of uh, participants enrolled in it, uh, about uh, 1,500, from 39 countries. Uh, it's uh, um, for us a, a, a sort of unexpected uh, result. We made um, a um, sort of tam tam uh, through all the networks uh, that uh, we have, uh, not only specifically in laboratory animal science, but uh, in research in general. And thanks to the support of ERFAN, that uh, is uh, the African Network for Research, coordinated by our institute and um, promoted by the OIE, the World Organization for Animal Health. We had the opportunity to involve also uh, participants from African countries, but as you can see, we have someone also from uh, South America, the Latin America. So it's uh, important, I think, to, to see that uh, talking about uh, legislative uh, aspects, uh, mainly uh, from uh, the EU member states. So we are talking about the directive 2010-63. Uh, we attracted uh, the attention of uh, Mm, a number of uh, experts uh, working in this field worldwide. That it's important that, especially from uh, such an area, uh, geographical area, uh, senior profiles, uh, especially um, professors uh, from uh, uh, the universities, uh, have been engaged. In terms of the seniority of the participants, uh, this picture show uh, a sort of uh, balanced representation of uh, um, different classes. Uh, in terms of professional profiles, uh, we have a sort of variety, uh, but the most relevant uh, um, ones are veterinarian, biologist and biotechnologist, uh, but also, uh, as you can see, lab technicians, uh, doctor in human medicine, uh, uh, chemist and pharmacist. Uh, it's also, I think, very important to uh, underline that the most of them um, as a, a a professional experience uh, um, that is uh, uh, over um, 10 years. So we are talking about uh, senior profiles in this field and we interpret uh, uh, this um, information, this data as a um, sign of um, a demand for training in this field. Uh, and that uh, this uh, aspect is confirmed by the fact that the 75% 70 of them has a previous expertise in the use of animals for scientific purposes. In terms of course completion, as you know, the course is still ongoing and it will be closed at the, the end of this year. Uh, we have uh, to underline that uh, the 72% completed the test and uh, uh, the 68 uh, passed the, the final test after completion. Uh, it's also very encouraging the level of satisfaction that we achieve on a scale from 1 to 5. The 5 is the uh, highest level of satisfaction 
uh, the average rate for the general appreciation of these experiences is 4.4. Why 4.3 is uh, uh, the perception of the educational quality of, uh, the, of this distance, distance learning course. And very low uh, is uh, the level of technical problems encountered uh, during uh, the course. Uh, we received uh, a lot of comments and uh, useful suggestions. Uh, we are uh, mm, presenting now um, some, uh, some of them. Um, it's uh, uh, nice to uh, underline that uh, uh, proposals for further courses uh, uh, have been expressed to, uh, uh, to address uh, uh, further uh, uh, training design for the for the future and um, a very interesting tip uh, I think uh, relates to the fact that uh, together with more videos uh, having as uh, we all know a very strong impact uh, in uh, in the educational process especially if uh, uh, self-learning supported um, interviews uh, with the scientists that uh, work um, in this field uh, as a privileged witnesses uh, could be uh, foreseen in future courses. Um, I would like to say that um, all the uh, participants uh, deeply appreciate uh, the e-tutoring support uh, and uh, we would dedicate uh, uh, this uh, screen to uh, Annalisa Falconi. Uh, our e-tutor, uh, she was the sole one managing uh, uh, an audience of uh, 1,500 uh, people and it's not very easy. And uh, please consider this aspect that we really underlined within uh, our uh, <coughs> quality manual uh, that it's not of uh, secondary importance. Uh, humanity and the human relationship uh, is uh, missing in self-learning processes. So as much as you can support the participants uh, in uh, approaching the course and, and to drive them towards the achievement of the conclusion passing the final test is of paramount importance. Furthermore, uh, together with uh, the intellectual output production, we organized uh, several uh, initiatives. As I said, um, all the intellectual outputs uh, have been uh, before internally validated at consortium level, uh, but um, a peer review process have been put in place in order to uh, guarantee that uh, external experts uh, um, evaluate the, uh, the, the outcomes, the, the intellectual outputs of this project, providing us right addresses to improve them. And their contribution um, was uh, very, very uh, crucial for us because uh, when you focus your attention on something uh, without uh, fresh air uh, in your mind, you risk to lose uh, the right uh, direction. So I'd like to uh, thank uh, all the peer reviewers contributing to the um, validation process. We have selected them through a public uh, procedure, through a public call and we have the honor to host two of them during the panel discussion today. We also um, um, organized five consortium meetings in total. Uh, the, the, the very last one will be tomorrow. And uh, uh, for dissemination purposes, uh, five webinars addressed to about 500 participants and six multiplier events addressed to about 
300 participants and one of them is the uh, final event of today that maybe increase the number of um, expected participants uh, it's proper to underline the that the stable consortium uh, team of experts uh, is made of uh, 14 uh, 14 uh, pro different uh, professional profiles and together with all the uh, intellectual outputs uh, and reporting, I think that we could uh, uh, bring with us uh, uh, good memories of uh, this uh, very challenging journey. And some uh, uh, pictures are maybe recalling to my colleagues uh, uh, the, the hard job we did together. So um, thank you very much uh, for uh, your attention. Mm -hmm.